Hello, I'd like to do a quick uh, review of assignment five, and we'll just go through the code. And then in a separate video, we'll turn it into an R markdown file and knit it. But for now, let's just cover the basics of assignment five, which used a data set of African countries from 1980 to 1999, uh, and had their GDP, their rainfall, uh, average rainfall for the country, in that year and uh, whether the country was at war or not. Um, so here's our uh, basic script. As usual, we'll clear the working space, uh, the directory, even though it's already cleared right now. Um, we'll uh, set our working directory. So I have uh, the file down in some uh, convoluted uh, place on my computer. We'll load our packages and the H uh, misc package uh, which I don't remember what it's doing right now, but we'll see it in a little, a little bit. Some of you may have had to install it. Then we'll uh, have our correct standard errors and um, turn off scientific notation as usual. So now we read in the data and there's the file. So little advice, right, is to always call your um, file when you read it in something short, two or three letters, because this is probably going to be the thing that's going to be most uh, used in your script. And if you make it 12 letters long, that's just going to mean a lot of text in your script that's completely unnecessary and it makes it harder to read your script. So try and always have your, um, your data frame as a pretty short uh, descriptive label that just makes things uh, easier. So there's our MSS data frame. We have 743 observations with 16 variables. I click on the blue expando button and just take a look here. I can see what the variables are and they're numeric. Uh, all of them are numeric except for the country name and the country code. So we'll do a little bit of descriptive statistics using Stargazer, a nice package. You now have VTable, which you can also use to uh, generate nice looking tables. VTable maybe it comes up a little nicer in the, uh, in the markdown language because you can tailor it more for HTML purposes. So we see um, the war variables are dummy variables, take on values zero or one. And then we have the GDP, GDP growth, uh, rainfall is the GPCP, Global Precipitation Climatology Project, I think is what it's called. Um, and then uh, uh, the polity uh, measure of democraticness, minus 10 being the, so we have the, the min is minus 10 and the max is nine. So the most democratic country uh, year and the least democratic country year are there. So uh, we mentioned uh, in class that part of your assignment was ground truthing. And um, so this is exactly what many people uh, might have wanted to do was to ground truth. Well, who had the lowest polity score? Who had the highest rainfall measure? Uh, and there's uh, easy ways to do this other than um, looking at the data itself and sorting it. Uh, opening it up in the window. So you can, of course, always go like this and then uh, click on the, oh, who had the highest GDP growth rate? Um, that's the most negative. So there's the most positive, uh, Uganda in, uh, what year is this? Uh, 1981 had a GDP growth of 0.67, uh, uh, presumably coming after war or something like that. Um, you know, things are hard to measure when uh, when you've had a war, GDP goes to a very low number, and then the next year it goes up by a lot, just like we're having with the COVID pandemic, right? When GDP numbers went up by about 30% in the last uh, in the last quarter because you're rebounding from a from a shutdown. Um, Chad uh, is the second in uh, 1985. Rwanda, right? Uh, this is 1995, right? The year after the genocide, GDP goes up by almost 31%. Uh, percent. So that's one way you can then. Um, uh, do the ground truth, uh, then you go and look up and why was GD, if you knew nothing about the Rwanda genocide, you'd look up Rwanda in 1995 and see that it was the year after the genocide and say, oh, that makes sense. Uh, Uganda, I have no idea what uh, happened in 1981 or 1980, presumably was the end of the uh, Ugandan civil war, perhaps. Um, so that's one way, but another way is to um, use the basic R commands. So for example, we can uh, find what the country name is of, uh, sorry, 
the condition here where the GPCP, the rainfall data, is equal to the max of the rainfall data. So if we run this one, uh, max uh, rainfall data, so we'll just run that part of the command, uh, we see that the max rainfall uh, taking care to drop the missing, uh, missing, remove the missing, NA.RM, NA standing for not available, NA is the convention for missing, uh, NA.RM equals true. Um, so we get the maximum as 2.8, uh, 2,587. So then we say, give us the country name of the country whose GPCP is equal to the max. So when I run that, I see that I get Sierra Leone. Um, so that's a simple way. So now we could, the nice thing about that is I can, all I have to do now is just change the one letter here, uh, sorry, just one function and get the min. Um, and uh, the minimum was uh, Mauritania. And, uh, and then of course I can also find out, well, I wonder which country had the median rainfall uh, and the median rainfall there is, uh, is Togo. So very easy way to uh, find these things out, especially once you get used to um, these, uh, these simple commands. Uh, now I can find out, well, what was the GDP, GPCP of the uh, max GPCP? So if I wanted to know what that was, rather than looking at it, rather than, I see it's 2587. We'll see that we can use this in our um, NIP uh, because uh, then we don't have to cut and paste these numbers. Instead, we can tell R and our text to insert the, uh, the maximum rainfall or the country that had the maximum rainfall. And then we, we can update that. We don't have to um, go and look and see what it was and cut and paste that and, and put it in. Um, so another thing I could do is I could take the MSS data set and filter it to see um, how, uh, what country had the highest uh, rainfall. And uh, so I could, I could do this for slightly lower level and see if there was anybody with 2300. And we see that the, basically the, the, all the top rainfalls uh, above 2300 were all in Sierra Leone. Um, so then we had uh, uh, the graphs and, and this is I think where we used uh, HMISC uh, to, um, to use it to use this cut to function to um, to put the countries into equally uh, numbered uh, equal number of groups so that the groups all had uh, the same uh, number so that uh, our graph was a little better structured instead of having one giant graph with everything we sort of put them into into four groups um, to see the different uh, levels of rainfall the error bars here are uh, because we have uh, um, 20 observations for each country from 1980 to 1999. Um, and so our mean rainfall is the mean of those 20 observations. And that, then we can calculate what the standard error is of our estimate of the mean. I think here was it the standard error or just the standard deviation? Um, I'm looking here, the error bar is the upper limit and the upper limit is, uh, uh, so we defined our error bar to be the um, standard deviation times 1.5. So uh, 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean. So it gives us an idea of the range. Remember, uh, two standard deviations away from the mean on high or low side, that's 95% of all the observations. One standard deviation away from the mean is about 60% of all the observations. So I chose an intermediate point here, uh, 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean you know, might be about 80% of all the observations. So only kind of more rare outliers, one in five events are gonna be outside of this, uh, of this range of these error bars. Um, so then we have uh, GDP, same, same thing. So these, every, everybody I think had no trouble. Uh, so we get the nice uh, graph of GDP. And then we have our regressions. Um, so our regressions all have fixed effects. So I'll just run the regressions and we get our table. Uh, notice that in our table, I haven't used correct standard errors here. So uh, I should have uh, included the correct standard errors here rather than the um, just regular standard error. Usually it doesn't make a very big difference, but you never know. So it's always better to use the correct standard errors. Um, now, I have some commentary on the regressions, but I'll include it in a, in a second. We really wanna focus on regression five and regression six. Regression five, 
um, tells us that uh, GPCP, the rainfall measure, positively affects GDP, but not when the country's in a war. So when the country's in a war, we see the interaction term here, uh, that's a negative uh, 0.349. So the net effect of rainfall on GDP for countries that are in war is 0.273 minus 0.34, which would be about minus 0.07. Um, so we can write that the following way. Regression five suggests that holding all other variables constant, the effect of uh, GDP on rainfall depends on whether violent con there was violent conflict in the country in that year. If there had been violent conflict in the country in that year, the effect of one unit rainfall resulted in a 0.27 minus 0.34 equals minus 0.76, uh, a decrease in GDP per capita. The effect is statistically significant, but not terribly economically significant because a 100 millimeter increase in rainfall is associated with only a decline in GDP of $7.06. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, careful since typing there. Meanwhile, uh, and all my words are underlined because I think I have language as French here in my um, R script. Uh, meanwhile, the effect of rainfall when the country is not in conflict is uh, large and a one unit increase in GPCP is associated with a 0.27 increase in GDP. So a 100 millimeter increase is associated with a $27 increase in GDP. Then we have the uh, quadratic specification. So we have GPCP and then the square of GPCP uh, here. And we see that there's a quadratic relationship and it's a starts off negative and then rises. So as GPCP gets higher, the positive term, the 0 0.001, which seems like a small number, but remember it's the coefficient on GPCP squared, GPCP times GPCP. GPCP is a number that's about, you know, say it's a thousand. So it's a thousand times a thousand. Um, so that's, uh, you know, six, uh, six decimal places. So a thousand times a thousand is uh, one, two, three, something like that. Yeah, so we're moving the decimal place way over when that, uh, when that changes. So that's why the coefficient, of course, is gonna be very, very small. Um, so we can think about that effect uh, basically by saying regress six suggests the relationship is nonlinear and quadratic, controlling for country year fixed effects when rainfall in a country ri uh, rises, another typo, uh, the country, if the country is a low rainfall country, uh, GDP actually declines. Uh, while GDP rises if the country is a high rainfall country. The, the plot below illustrates the quadratic relationship and suggests the level of rainfall of about XX is where the effect of rainfall turns positive. Well, let's see what that, quad, that curve uh, looks like. I think I have it here somewhere. Yep, just a second. Gonna pop this into uh, over into R. So here's our curve. Uh, I can actually put it right here. So we have the negative uh, uh, 1.47. So here's our intercept, our constant, negative 1.047 plus 0 0.001. X is going to be our GPCP. We're gonna let GPCP vary from zero to 2000. So we run that and this is what our quadratic looks like. And we can see that it hits bottom about 500. So we could type in here uh, about 500 millimeters is where the effect of rainfall turns, uh, turns positive. All right, so I'll stop there.